you want to get into FPV. Um, this is how you do it. A lot of equipment. A good friend of mine said, Dan, you're letting your geek hang out. This is it. Um, to show you how I fly, what I fly. So put together what uh, let me show you what I put together over the years. Uh, first of all, you need your plane, Skywalker. Skywalker 1900. This is the large wing. I'll show you the details on that a little bit later. All of your basic um, FPV camera equipment. A lot of batteries. Um, a good radio. And a FPV um, box I put together myself. A lot of work, a lot of filing, a lot of cutting. But I believe it came out pretty good. Um, and I'll show you the details on that also. And of course, a good antenna setup. Um, at the bottom of this video, I'll put in a few links to some uh, YouTube sites that I've been following over the years for some very, very good tips. Um, who uh, inspired me on building and putting together the certain pieces of what I have here. So, let's just go from right to left and I'll show you the different components. So this is my FPV case. Um, like I said, I'm very proud of this. I built this 100% myself. Um, it's starting to weaken at certain points. So I got to put to put some better glue in there. Um, but basically, it's um, just uh, little pieces of uh, building hobby plywood with a little bit of uh, felt over it to make it look nice and uh, dark, so you can see the screen while you're flying. Um, 7 inch color monitor, uh, voltmeter, very important so you find so you when you're flying you see how much battery you have. Um, move this a little bit to the side. Um, I got screws in here so I can swap down this. There's hinges actually behind here and here um, so that this piece fold, folds down and this uh, cover here also folds up so you can get on the, the innards, the insides. Um, Turn on. Like I said, you see your battery power, your screen goes on, and when you have a signal, it comes in. Um, what I have here on the side is my AV um, inputs for the two antennas, what I showed you earlier, we showed those again, and power outputs for those antenna also, so you can run your, um, your AV receiver power um, right off your power from your, from your board here. Um, what I have here is video output, so I have video output to my goggles, and I'll show you these goggles in a minute, I've been very impressed with these. Um, video output to your goggles, I'm playing here with another video output, so I can put a, a, um, a chinch type of a, a mini chinch, uh, I believe it's a 2 uh, millimeter mini chinch uh, connector for video output. Um, I have a USB connector, this is basically only for power. In case I have a USB power to want to recharge my GoPro or whatever while I'm in the field. So I have that set up in here. Let's go in and on the inside first of all the easiest stuff. Battery. Battery connector on the inside. Got enough place in there to put a couple of cables. Um, uh, my additional GoPro video cable. I always remember, got to keep your... Um, uh, a card so you can throw that in your plane just in case it goes down. So I always have one or a couple of those in there with me. Once in a while somebody in the field will stop and say, oh I'm interested, uh, can I check out your site? So I'll give them also a, a card and he'll look and uh, they can look at my information. Here you see the bottom side of this, it's underneath here, it's just basic plywood. This is all with hot glue um, put together, the hinges screwed in. Like I said, it, it come out very nice and I'm I'm quite impressed with it, um, if I do say so myself. Um, what I have here is my a compartment where I keep also the remote controls for the different devices. Um, what I put in here is my um, my video recorder, um, and that flits right in here, so I have that plugged in. 
turn it on, close it, side it away, it's working. Um, I'll get into the details of that video recorder also. In a, in a few minutes, I'm going to just check back to my notes because there's so many components here. Um, yeah, that's, I got that from BevRC. Um, that's the PV700. I'm getting very good quality results on that. One thing to watch out, tip, tip, tip. Um, turn off your video recorder first before you turn off any of your equipment, you turn off your airplane. Once this thing goes to snow, it freezes. Your video, you can recover, but you need special software to recover your video, what's on here. So, one big tip, always turn this off as very first when you when you finish flying. Um, yeah, like I said, very good things with that. Here is a very good tip. I'm just temporarily, I've got my cable to hook directly into that. Going to my antenna, that's going to be hooked up to my second port when I get that finished wired up here and here. Um, but what you can see, what's inside, hidden inside here, is the Eagle Eyes Eagle Tree. That's a diversity controller. What that does is it monitors both of my antennas to see if uh, my um, which antenna has the better signal quality and then switches on that antenna. Plus it also gives me an, the outputs. It has four video outputs, one for the camera, one for my screen, one for the video output here, and the fourth one I'm going to be putting on here for video output. So I have four video outputs, four individual video outputs. I don't have to slip anything through. On my LCD I have video 1 and video 2. Video 1 is the one coming from the video output. Video 2 is actually the video I'm going through my um, going through my uh, recorder and then I can actually check on my screen is my recorder up running, is the record button running so I can hit that on the fly also there. Um, yeah, I went the extra mile and I even uh, uh, put on this felt on the inside of these boxes um, so, yeah, basically that's a video, um, um, uh, what do you say, in Germany you say cover. Maybe somebody can write out a thing to, you know, my kit, British, British people say your kit, uh, a portion of the kit that I need to uh, take to the field with me and I have most of my stuff in one. Needless to say, I'm also carrying another big box of equipment, which is the other stuff you see laying around here on the table. Um, I said I was going to say a, a word or two about this. Let me check if I'm still in the picture. Yes. This here is um, a thing from flyingwings.co.uk. That cost, let me see, £9.95. I was, for many, many years, I was looking to buy a... Uh, um, looking to buy a uh, goggles, but the goggles are just so damn expensive. I'm sorry for swearing, but they're just so expensive. I, I will not argue the quality, but I'm just, this is just so, so, so expensive. And then after reading forums and stuff, I found a guy who said there on YouTube, he did a build video on this, and I was so impressed that I ordered it myself. I ordered it during his summer vacation, so it took a while to get, for it to get to me. But when it got here, you see the build was very quick. Just with two component, I put, I tacked it together with hot glue, and then I put it together with two component, component uh, glue, and um, I um, went with a black magic marker. I went over my hot glue. There was a guy who was saying he's having problems with the light going through here, and when you have it on your head, um, you can see the uh, you can see the different uh, you can see the light coming through in the back here, and I've remedied that with a black magic marker. So. Um, yeah, on eBay, like I said, that, that build video, I'll, I'll put up the link also on this YouTube, to his YouTube. Um, he gives you this, uh, the eBay page where you can pick this up. I think it's $14 or something like that. Very, very cheap. It's a three inch um, LCD screen used for um, uh, backup monitors from campers and stuff like that. Um, but everything else comes with it, except for the screen, of course. And I even cut it out so I have my wear glasses and I cut it out so I have my glasses fitted perfectly inside here and I have this thing on my head and it's this is beautiful it's very very light um, 
Of course, I got extensions going down to my battery pack and going down to here. So I, if you've seen my flying videos, um, um, you'll see me uh, sitting in the in the back of my station wagon and um, um, next to this, and I'll have this on me. And um, this is a very, very, very nice way to fly, especially us people who wear glasses. And as I've been reading in the forums about all of these uh, video goggles, what they offer, um, it's you have a hard time if you wear glasses with those things. Very good, very cheap solution. I'm talking about all together with glue and everything, not over 30 euros to put this thing together. So, recommend. Very big tip for my piece. Let's put that uh, up. Flyingwings.co.uk. Um, I went uh, went out and I bought for a couple of pounds more. The, uh, that's these uh, these straps you put on the back of this mounting straps. And all I did is basically I had some old piece of plastic there laying around, and I hot glued it on there. Then hot glued this plastic over on top of it, so it has a very very good grip. And I know this is not going to pull out of there, but with this hot glue, it's still going to be a little bit flexible. So, moving on. That's what I say, that's piece one, two, flying. Let's go on over on this side of the table. Get some of the equipment first before I get into the plane. I saw uh, uh, another guy's uh, um, video the other day on his, uh, his plane and how he did the connectors. And maybe I can give him a couple of tips here on what I've done. When I see what he could do, probably do better. But just to get back to the equipment. First of all, cameras. <laughs> Cameras, 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 cameras. You make your experiences. Um, first of all, I've flown with the uh, on my uh, Skywalker with the Styrofoam uh, um, front on the, on, on the airplane, and um, I've had uh, the normal mount for my GoPro on there, and I was just flying that with the plug into my for my radio, my transmitter and um, just flying like that. Then I said there could be a better way of doing this and I started putting this thing together. This is 100% uh, home built, put it that way. Um, I bought this from some Foxtech FPV or something like that. Very cheap, like $9 or $6, something like that. Very cheap. Not including the servos, of course. Um, but the rest of it is just spare plywood I've had left over from my from my um, FPV coffer, um, and um, just uh, glued it all together and uh, put in. I noticed I was a little bit too narrow on the, what it would fit in the airplane, so I put in a couple of brackets. This is left over what I've cut off the end of this, turned it around and put it on there. Um, it came out pretty nice. I've mounted this. It's just a little bit of a sponge inside here. So I've got a little bit of um, um, a little bit of a vibration there, and of course I've got my mounting for my uh, GoPro up in front. So I've got uh, tilted down slightly to get the optimal flying position, and let's Velcro that in there, and then it. So let's continue this. For some reason the camera stopped and I had to uh, restart it. Um, yeah, um, I believe I was saying what the, this camera run, what I'm running on top of here is. I've seen a lot of video reviews of that in the in, in YouTube, so I decided to pick it up myself. Um, Sony Super HAD2 CCD 600 TVL, and I believe that I bought that from Security Cam 2000 or something like that. The web page, like I said, I'll put all the links at the bottom of the page so you can see where I picked up the most of this stuff. Um, has very good video quality. Um, um, I'm experiencing some other problems. Had nothing whatsoever to do. If you see my last two videos, you see that I had very bad video quality on the one video. In the second video, it kicked out um, in the middle of the flight, um, which caused a very dangerous situation. I was um, about 700 meters away, very high up, 350 meters. And um, usually uh, when you look out and try to find a plane like that, you see a spot in the sky. You can find it and you can usually fly home by sight, but it's very difficult. And um, 
Well, um, I flipped on the return to home, thank God. I had that. Uh, had time to take off my goggles and then start searching for the plane and found it very, very quickly, I, I must say. But the problem was, is of course, my flying battery, my video battery, I've been using this now since a year and a half, has a lot of flights on it and I've noticed the flying time has been, as I've been going up with my airplane and optimizing it and getting better balancing and uh, all that kind of good stuff, um, I've been reducing my battery uh, consumption or my battery capacity and uh, got to replace that to make sure I get also the full 20 minutes flight time also for my video battery. Tip number two, <laughs> make sure that your batteries are all at the same uh, value when you're flying or else you'll have plenty of motor battery uh, but your video batteries will go down. So, um, which brings us to the point batteries. Um, I'm flying, um, this here's the old trusted and tried uh, 500 milli um, amp, 12.6 volt, maximal charge, very good battery. Um, 11, I mean 11 volts, sorry, 30C. All this is on, when you see my one of my flying videos, I always put in the tail of, or the, in the, in the, in the back, at the end of my videos, all of the equipment, what I have in the plane while I'm flying. So you'll see if I'm flying this battery, or this battery, or this battery, whichever one you'll see. So if you're interested on which performance I'm using, um, or which battery I'm using to attain that video, um, that's what you have there. Um, yeah. Also, keychain cams. Watch out for these. Um, in eBay, they sell them in all kinds of names and numbers. There's other people doing very good professional reviews on these. Um, I bought two of these already and um, um, got a lower quality than what I had expected or what I had ordered. Um, the videos, what you've seen coming out of these, have been less than optimal. Um, this is, these are what it is. It's very cheap. It's a toy. It's nice to put on your plane, maybe under the wing, looking at the plane if you want to do something like that. Um, but it's not good for long distance or looking out in the, in the distance from your FPV point of view. Um, I bought, I ordered a Mobis. It should be here within three or four days. I'm waiting for that any day now, like I said. And then I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get some very good quality videos on, on some of my other airplanes. Uh, for example, my Corsair. Um, my first uh, FPV um, video is the Flycam 1 HD HD. Um, hey, I see German and English. Um, HD, the HD version here, um, I've been getting very good results to it. Um, I basically, because of peer pressure, put it bluntly, I went over to the GoPro. Um, but this thing has gotten me the same video quality as the GoPro has, has gotten. Um, I really don't know why I, have, why I have stopped flying this. I'm still trying to find a way to integrate this thing again, maybe underneath my airplane to get some other uh, views while I'm flying. Um, but this one will be coming back. I will be doing a lot more with this Flycam 1 HD. Like I said, I can recommend this to anybody as an alternative to the GoPro. Um, the fly people at Flycam 1, they've also went up to and built another... Uh, uh, camera it looks a lot like the GoPro physically um, but I haven't jumped onto that bandwagon yet um, from moving over into cameras how do you hook them up into your system of course you need a good uh, transmitter the ponton to your receiver on your antennas or your transmitters um, in my uh, Skywalker I have that physically mounted here I have bought a second one so I can put this on for example under my quad uh, my quad or the helicopters or other airplanes and of course what you're seeing here is the I be crazy this guy has really inspired me a lot on these antennas to try to get the optimal out of what you can get out of the, out of your um, out of your video equipment um, so just uh, search group um, YouTube for I be crazy and you'll find a lot of stuff and a lot of information about these antennas and they've also gotten uh, to be very cheap now. Also, the first ones that came out, you could pay for the one on my um, uh, my Skywalker. I paid, I think, twenty five, thirty dollars, and getting down to this one here, where I think I paid like six dollars for it. So, um, like I said, um, there. Attention to the laws. I must say that to your country. 
um, where you're flying in and how much power you can put out on this. Um, just be careful. Um, but uh, like I said, that's said on that. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, a little mount for the field. I've been taking this with me and just putting it up and uh, videotaping me, or you'll see a video come out and soon with me sitting there flying and and the plane going over and stuff like that. Um, once you start getting inside your airplane, this is one thing I picked up. I've been playing with this on, a, on another plane I've been flying, my uh, my You Can't Fly from Riley, um, or from, from Hype, sorry, from Hype, my You Can't Fly. Um, this is a, um, the Cyclops. Uh, I put the Cyclops, I bought it, it was, as at the point I bought it, it was only a board. So I picked this thing uh, at Conrad Electronics. I picked this little case up, cut it out, and we hot glued it in there. Um, adds me a, a little bit more weight, but it's a little bit more, it's a safer way to fly. The I don't like flying boards inside my airplanes. Um, this is Cyclops Storm OSD. Um, bought it for $142 from, I think, BevRC um, back then. Um, I was deeply involved in a few forums as we were testing this. The guy who put this thing together and programmed it. He's been doing a lot of good good work. I must compliment him on, uh, on uh, how he is very customer orientated. Um, um, like I say, you might want to check out a few of my online videos or my YouTube videos, what I have where um, I'm doing the storm in my You Can Fly. And then you can see how this thing is on the screen and how it performs. But Let's get over to uh, the main event. Well, now let's check out my antennas first. I said, yeah, we base one thing in here is the antennas. Um, I don't know how much you can get into that. Let me move this camera around a little bit. Let's see that. You see the receivers down here? This is these R RC uh, 305s I've set up. Um, they're running both on the uh, same channel, um, so uh, it's uh, a quite nice setup. Um, I have a the antenna, the directional antenna. We're just starting to see up there. That's a also a 5.8 gigahertz, um, 16 dB directional. Um, I had in, I haven't. I just bought this stand uh, recently. Um, that gets my antennas up over three meters. Um, there's a, a, a nice old chap from New Zealand who tells you a lot on antennas and he has a very good uh, a YouTube site. Um, he uh, explains, get your antennas up high and you'll get the best responses you can. I've took his uh, tips on that and I put them up there as high as I can get. And I'm getting, um, like I said, when the batteries are working, when everything's working perfectly, I'm getting very, very good. Um, quality video. Um, I'm working at my 2.4 um, um, gigahertz on my uh, receiver from um, <clears throat> from my Futaba in my airplane, and with this 2.4 gigahertz, um, I'm maxing out at. Um, well, I haven't act ma actually maxed out yet. I've been out at uh, 1.2 kilometers. And it's been still flying, and my video quality has been beautiful on that. So, let me show you what I've done in my airplane. You'll see this, this is not a stock um, Skywalker. See a couple of like, bomb pods at the bottom. I've been playing with the Skywalker and trying to get landing gear on it. Um, I've had a set of landing gear on it. That's the ones you see in my opening on my videos, the uh, big balloon tires and things like that. And I was a lot worried a lot about drag. So I took those off and I, um, actually with fiberglass, I just put on a shell from about here to here underneath this plane. Um, also helps me out if I, I land, belly land it. But um, what I was looking for is I was looking for these retracts. And um, uh, what I'm trying to do is I tried to mount, get an ability to mount a retract in there and I just have the retract come out to reduce some drag. So that's what I'm playing with there. Let me get you a downside view of that. Um, so you can 
see what's going on there. Um, there you see the retract openings. Let me try to look behind the camera at the same time. The retract openings here at the bottom. Um, like I said, it worked nicely. I've flown a, flown a couple of flights with it and it worked nicely, but um, I went back to this gear. It's a lot easier. Screw it in. I can belly land if I want to take it out. Um, this is actually the landing gear from my Hype You Can Fly. Um, crashed it and uh, beyond repair. So I'm savaging parts. Um, it's a little weak. I must say that. It bends when I do hard landings, but you can bend it right back to where you want it. So it's quite nice. Um, like I said, it's very good to the mount, even the mounting. So, once again, I guess this camera stops set after a couple of minutes of filming automatically. I don't know how much of you have seen. I'll cut this in again um, to show you the, the, uh, this uh, uh, landing gear I have. Um, what I've done is, like I said, I've cut out the, uh, the uh, for, for uh, retracts. They work quite nicely. Um, but I put in this from the Hype You Can Fly. Um, crash that, like I said, beyond repair. Um, so I'm scavenging parts out of it, and it works very nicely. It's a um, still gives me a nice flat for surface where I can belly land it, um, but um, also gives me two screws. Take it out and or put them back on, and I have a nice landing gear. Um, a little bit weak, like I said. Maybe I'll put in a new um, landing gear into that with the same width, a little bit more metal on it. Um, but like I said, you can burn it, bend it right back and it's, it's quite nice again. Um, while I'm at the bottom of the plane, modification number two, what I've done. I don't know if you can see this very well. This, um, you can fly. A lot of people were saying the angle of your tap of your, of your, uh, um, of your elevator um, is a little bit... Um, too high up so you're, you're not really flying a straight and level if you see it the way it is there sorry if you see it the way it is there that's a straight and level flight and um, also this boom here was very wobbly the newer version of the Skywalker they've completely remade this to, to fix that so um, um, but what I've done a lot of people have putting these bars in here carbon fiber bobs they work beautifully to help stabilize that Second, what I've done is I have from aluminum from my local um, hobby, um, Home Depot or whatever, uh, this little piece of hobby aluminum where I've just stuck up in there, created a slit along the bottom, right along the, the, the two halves, stuck it up in there, a little bit of hot glue to keep it in place, and then with, a, with, uh, with the duct tape, just uh, put this on very snugly, and it gives me a very strong boom. So. That's a modification what I've done. Um, also, you see the steering. Um, where I have here also is uh, where I've, you see I have on my rudder, um, just hot glue the bar on the bottom and I have my steering that way. It works very nicely. Um, thinking about redoing that though, hard landings that goes right to there and I've had to replace that quite often that's why I've mounted this quick replace for a for my servos is so I can replace the servo when it, when it gets broken when I've come into a hard landing and that rips aside and uh, my servo gears get stripped so also maybe for some of their lessons learned um, other than that you see everything is glued on my wing I don't I have it screwed in but I don't take that off at all um, I've completely uh, removed my elevator and I've put in um, hinges in there to make that a lot easier and, a, and it flies straight with the original one when you pushed up on your gear in the middle there would be like a wave that would push up on the sides it would go back down so I just completely took it off put in my own hinges and now this works very very nicely um, this of course you see my video equipment saw a lot of tips keep your video antenna as far away as possible from your transmitter antenna and your other electronics so I guess I'm pretty far back there I'm utilizing this hot this pad what uh, the Skywalker offers in the back to mount my my video transmitter um, there's your normal Skywalker kit um, I'm flying the FY31AP that's my um, 
you know, say flight controller, autopilot, whatever you want to call it. Um, and my GPS on there. Um, like I said, originally this, uh, my, um, my speed uh, controller was inside the, the, the plane. I've been noticing I was getting a little bit of heat problems. After long flights, 15, 20 minutes, I would hear my motor be kicking out while in my, in my, um, during my flight. So I took this out and put it on the outside. And since it's been on the outside, I've been having no problems whatsoever. So maybe a tip for somebody there. Um, before I get up here at the top, let me show you the spaghetti, what's going on inside here. <laughs> so the FY606, um, I got it on here, but I've, um, um, I haven't been flying it yet. I haven't been using it yet. Um, I'll let you know what goes on with that once I get it going. Um, I can program my FY31 with it, um, get my waypoints in there and things like that. But I haven't been flying live with that thing yet. So, like I said, and there it is. I don't know if you can see that very good. There's the spaghetti. There's the chaos. Um, I've got your Hornet FI OSD, the FI31 AP, and a lot of spaghetti cabling inside there. Um, I will be straightening it up soon. Um, my receiver's mounted up here in the top. I've got a separate BEC, of, like I was stating before, for my video. I've got separate power supplies for video power and my, and my um, motor power, which I can plug in here, plug in here, plug in my camera, get everything squared away at home. You see my business card in there, my private business card in there. Um, get that all squared away at home. And then once I get to the field, all you do is flip it on and fly. And here I have, uh, if you see, if, I don't know if you noticed it, I have LEDs mounted at the bottom, the tail, and the wing tips. And here I can flip those on and off if I want to use them during the flight or not. Um, one thing I really want to show you is on a video I've seen of a colleague, he just put another FPV flyer, he just put it up, on how he hooked up all of his wirings to his airplane. And he has about 10 cables where he's connecting every time he puts on his wing. Um, I noticed that problem and I've said I don't want to be like that. What I've done is I've connected all of the cables that I have coming out of my airplane, that cable salad, what you see down here, and I brought them into two plugs, right wing, left wing. And when I go to the field, let me show you my wing here. Um, I keep my wing, I've glued, it physically glued together so I, I can just stand, stand this in the corner. When I go to the field, all I do is I plug in the one wing, plug in the other wing. I have my flaps on there. All the cabling is underneath this, uh, this white um, tape. Um, you have your ailerons at the end. And at the tip of the wing, you have your LEDs. I'm going to be replacing this with a lot brighter ones. They're quite hard to see, when, except when you're night flying. Um, but like I said, it's a very quick um, hookup. It's a lot of soldering, of course you got to figure out which cable goes where, which cable goes where. Plugged it into a lot of hot glue so it really stays in place. It's like a brick right there. And um, like I said, go to the field, take it up, plug it in. You see I've color coded. I've got the blue here and this one here is blue. So take it to the field, plug it in and the one wing is completely connected maybe a tip for somebody um, yeah this is FPV flying this is me letting my geek hang out um, if you have any questions comments uh, tips please um, let me know I will answer and um, I'll be pleased for any tips and uh, once you get flying fixed wing your next step is something like this and this is uh, where it gets also very interesting to fly but that's another video, I think. Yo, thank you. Thanks for watching. And if you like, please click on like. And if you really like, please click on subscribe.